Bwana asifiwe sana. I'm so excited to be here. Nafuraha sana kuwa mahali hapa. This year we are saying it is the year of great catch. Mwaka tunasema kwamba ni mwaka wa kuvua kwa utela. And uh, one of the things that I am sh- I'm sure of. But this is a great year. It does not matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. It doesn't matter what the nation and what what it is in our nation. But one thing that I'm sure of is that this is the year of great catch. And remember this. It is Jesus who told Peter. It is the same Jesus Jesus who is telling us. He told Peter, put up, put out into the deep water. So the same Jesus who told Peter is the same Jesus. The same Jesus who saw the situation the way it was during that time. The way he saw the discouragement the disappointment that was in the life of Peter Vila together li, with his companion moyo kwa Petero. the same Jesus is the same today yule yesu yule leo. he is the one who is here today Ni he is the one leo. that we believe today yule and he leo. is also telling us Na put out into the deep water Rusha pale and let down your nets zako. not just one net si but he is telling tu. us we put down our net we put out our nets into the deep waters hallelujah so we do not have to get troubled i know things are not very easy just as it was at the time of peter you can imagine this guy was there and he had done the fishing the whole night. Nothing that came forth. Like the way you are doing your business. And nothing that is coming forth. You are, you are, you are going to the supermarket with that salary that you were given. And when you try to do the budget, nothing that is coming forth. You are discouraged. I know, as our sister was saying, that the situation in our country is not so pleasing. It is not encouraging. When you go to the educational sector, when you go to the education, our, our children are coming every now home every now and then. It is so discouraging. People are discouraged. People are discouraged. Hallelujah. But thank God. Jesus told Peter. Put out into the deep water and let down your net for a catch. You are going to catch. Ay, 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 ay. You are going to fish. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what you are going through. You are going to fish. If you are not going to get discouraged and if you are going to believe the word of the Lord, Today, Leo. hallelujah, Amen. I'm saying today, Nasema Leo. we have a church, Tuko na kanisa. we have a church, Tuko we, we na are amli. appointed, Tume we are appointed Tume pewa juku. to do a few things, mambo kaka. to do a number of things, mambo kaka. and we are reading from Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verses 10. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible says. Jeremiah was, was told, see today, not tomorrow, not yesterday, not the day before, not the day to come, not next week, it is not next month, it is not last year, it is not the other year, but Jeremiah is being told, see today, I have appointed you, hallelujah, Jehovah is telling us today, 
that he has appointed us. You know what? When you read the story of this young this, this young man at this time. This is the time that he was being called to be a prophet. He, he was saying, I am just a young man. I, I am not equal to the task. I, I, I do not know how to go about it. But, but God told him, see today, I appoint you of a nation and of a kingdom to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build, and to plant. Why? This was a very difficult task to Jeremiah. Indeed, it was not easy. Two things here. Jeremiah was appointed over what? One, nations. Two, kingdoms. So there are, there are two things here that were running parallel and that Jeremiah was to deal with. And, and God told him, I have appointed you. I have, I have charged you to be over nations. What are nations? Nations is a group of people under one government or sharing the same history. God has put Jeremiah uh, to oversee these nations or this, this kind of arrangement. Now, when you are talking about nations, we are talking about people. We are talking about language. We are, we are talking about all, all manner of things that involve people. So Jeremiah was told, I am, I am giving you church and you will be doing this task without fear. But he was very young. When, when this was being said to him. But he, he had nothing to do. And I was trying to, I was, I was trying to, to, look at, to look at the way God calls people. When God calls you to certain uh, to, to do a certain task. Sometimes you have no responsibility or you do not have anything to offer so that you can be appointed in such a, in such a, a, a task. And especially in the things of God. But in the things of the world, you, you got to have some qualifications. You got to have qualified in some areas. But, but when God calls you, to be uh, to do a certain task. He does not need any qualification. He only needs your availability. He only needs you to be there. Even sometimes you feel that you are inadequate like Jeremiah. Hallelujah. And Jeremiah was told from today, see today. No, not tomorrow, today I have appointed you even today I'm declaring some people here were appointed in the government that is coming to be appointed in the coming government aye, aye. somebody amen, should believe amen. somebody should believe this that you will be appointed in some positions in the government there, there, 
people with crazy faith should get this and begin to and begin to get it because when you are appointed you are given a responsibility you did not deserve it but thank God you have qualified I can see men and women qualified here to read to read, to read, to read in institutions Amen. are you believing together with me you can even be appointed to to uh, what to head that parastato. Jeremiah was told it was not a simple task to Jeremiah because he had, he had to do it. And you know this time when Jeremiah was being appointed it was a time when the, the nation that God had, had appointed or God had, had, had chosen was to check, was to call to Babylon. But God is calling him to be over nations. That when we are talking about nation, we are talking about the nation of Israel, the nation of and we are talking about people themselves. When we are talking about nation, we are talking about people themselves. And, 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 and to show you that we are talking about people, if you read Jeremiah, uh, Genesis 12 and verses 2, this is what God, this is what God told Je uh, Abraham. Genesis, Genesis 12 verses 2. I will make you in a great nation. And I will bless you. And I will make you na your name great. And I will bless you. In other words, he's saying, I will make you in a great nation. And these are the nations that Jeremiah was told that I am giving you charge, I'm appointing you over them. And he was told, I am also going to make you charge over kingdoms. Now, kingdoms. What are kingdoms? A realm of, of prophets or nature, especially one of the three broad divisions of natural objects. Yeah, All, it can be the dominion over which the spiritual sovereignty of God or Christ extend, whether in heaven or in earth. Or, or, or in earth. So Jeremiah was, or in other words, let me just uh, say this, anything conceived as a constituting idiom or sphere of independent action control, kingdom of thoughts, maybe. A state or government having a king or a queen as its head. A spiritual sovereignty of God or Christ. At least now you can be able to get a few, a few explanations about kingdom. Now, this time Jeremiah was being appointed to be uh, over kingdoms. That time, there were kingdoms that were ruling the, the world. There was the Assyrian kingdom. The Babylonian kingdom. We also had the Persia Mende, and we also, we, have, we also have the Roman kingdom. So, that time of Jeremiah, now, Jeremiah was now uh, to be 
uh, to be uh, to be during the time of the Rome of the of the Babylonian kingdom. And we see that Jeremiah was ruling during the the time when kings, a number of kings were ruling. That time that Jeremiah was to be a prophet, there were kings that were ruling at that time. And there were a number of things that were happening during those days. So kingdoms at that time when Jeremiah was being told, you will be, you will be over kingdoms. It was referring to the kingdom that was ruling or the kingdoms that were ruling at that time. That even those kingdoms Jeremiah will be over them. He will be speaking against them. He will be speaking and speaking God's word concerning them. So he was to be over those kingdoms. Let me say this. During that time, there were kings in 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 the land that were good king and they were they referenced god during the time of the prophecy of Jeremiah. And there were others that were so evil. They never allowed they never allowed God uh, to uh, to be mentioned during their reign. And the nation of God, the nation that God had 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 called, they were going through difficult moment economically because their spiritual life was was down. So at this time when Jeremiah was prophesying, now, when he was appointed, God knew. He knew that Jeremiah is the one to, to, um, uh, to prophesy concerning the children of Israel going to exile in Babylon. And so he had to encourage him and he was to tell him now he is the one who is over those nations and kingdoms. And therefore there was nothing else that rather than now Jeremiah to accept. And according to this verse, that is verse 10, now we see now Jeremiah uh, being told see today I appoint you over nations and kingdom to do what? Now, in the nations, what are you going to do? In the kingdoms, what are you going to do? Now, in the midst of people, what are you going to do? In the kingdom, what are you going to do? Now, this is what he was told. This is your business. And your business is, it is to uproot and to tear down. The reason why he was told this is because of the explanation that I have told you that the, the children of God had turned away from worshipping God because of the, the people that were living or the king that were ruling over them. And these were the things that uh, the, the Jeremiah was told that they have to pull down. To uproot. The things to uproot. And the things to pull down. One of them. Were rise. Force prophets. There were so many false prophets because his business was to make sure that the people of God are spiritually spiritually awake. 
ilikuwa biashara yake ilikuwa kuhakikisha kwamba watu wa Mungu wameinuka kiroho. They are able to worship God. Wako na uwezo wa kumwabudu Mungu. And therefore Jeremiah was told your business is to make sure the nations and the kingdoms that are ruling at this time they are free from false rise or false prophets because at that time when Jeremiah was telling the people now it is this way you got to go to Babylon for 70 years and a prophet came up and they were saying no they were saying Apana, we are not going to it is just we will go there for two years and then we come back but, but Jeremiah told them you are going to be there for 70 years you will suffer for the, next, for the next five years, for the next ten years. And then somebody else comes in. And he tells you, you will not suffer for those years. You will only suffer for two days. Whom are you going to believe yourself? Yeah. Who are you going to believe? You are going to believe the one who is saying two days. So, conflict arises. So they had, Jeremiah was to make sure that people in the lives of people rise have been uprooted. In the life of people, hatred is uprooted. In the life of people, idol worship is no longer there. In the nations, in the life of people, and also in the kingdom, there is no more evils that are done. So these are some of the things that Jeremiah was to approve. Things to put up. Things to, to, to bring down. And you know, when some of these things are there, even today, even today they are there even in churches. There are people who will come in a church like this. They have been assigned to make sure that everybody has run away from the church. Where do we pastor their hand away? Pastor Shu, need data. You hear many things and then you, 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 you begin to see people running away from the church and you begin to ask yourself, what is happening? The, the pastor has not spoken anything bad. The, the pastor has not rebuked anybody. In front of people. Have I ever rebuked anybody in front of people? This is a church of wrath, care, and destination. Did you hear me? Do you hear? This is a church of what? Love, care, and restoration. That is our business here. You go to other churches, it is a church of praise and whatever. That is how those people behave. That is how they are. But here we are a church of love, care, and restoration. So Jeremiah was to make sure that people are the things that would make would cause people to go away and not to listen to what God is saying have been uprooted. Now, 
He was to do another thing. To destroy and to throw down. Aharibu na angamize. To destroy and to throw down. Aharibu, kuharibu na kuangamiza. So there were so many evil waters. Kwa hivyo kulikuwa na madhabahu megi ya owo. Because of the idol worship. Kwa sababu ya kuwabudu sanamu. And when there is idol worship. Na wakati kuna uwabudu wa sanamu. The spirituality of the people goes down. Maisha ya kiroho ya watu huenda chini. And so Jeremiah was to make sure that those altars have been destroyed. They have to be brought down. And therefore Jeremiah was to make sure you destroy those evil altars. So that there will be no spiritual decay in thy life for people. And, and these are some of the things that we need to, to understand as a church. Because we have been appointed also to make sure that people have heard God. People have turned to Jesus. People have turned to God. And let me tell you, when people turn to God, even in, nation, even in a nation like this, if people decide from today going forward, our help does not come from any other quarter. It comes from God. And so, Jeremiah was told, make sure you destroy. And there was one guy who, who did this in Judges chapter 6, verses 25-26. I know you know this one. Judges 6 verses 25-26. That same night, or that night, that day, that day, that same night, the Lord said to him, take the second brook from your father's hands, hand, the one seven years old, tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down their Asherah poles beside it. And verses 26. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord uh, your God on the, top of his, of, on the top of his height using the wood of Asherah poles that you cut down over the second bull as a burnt offering. Let's go to verses 25. Verses 25. That same night, the Lord said to him, Today the Lord is saying, Hallelujah. Amen. Today the Lord is appointing us. Like the way he did to this young man. He was, he, he was also a young man, this one. If you look at the life of this, this, this man, Gideon. This is what was happening. He came from a very small clan. It was not recognized in their community. But, but God, nevertheless, God came. And he, won, he appointed him. God appointed him. And if you read there before, you will see. And where we are now in, he's saying, that same night, the Lord said to him, take the second bull from your father's heart, the one seven years old, tear down your father's altar. Where, where? Where? Imagine, you are told, you go and destroy the altar of your father. Where, where? Wengi hapa umetoka umetoka mbali wacha wale wana wamezaliwa Nairobi wamekaa Nairobi na mambo kama haya and those some of us we have come far only those who have been born in Nairobi but there are those people who have come from 
the village where there are some practices and then you say that uh, from today I refuse the religion of my mother and my father. You, you can, and there are those people who, who, who can tell me, yes, I experienced some, I experienced some war. After I decided I am not going to be in that religion. I am not going to be in that in that congregation, in that that one. You can, even, you can imagine what happened and what they say to you. What about destroying their orders? Because Gideon was told by God go and destroy those orders. Let me ask. What are the orders? No, I'm not asking what are orders, but I'm asking what are these orders? They might be, they, or they are there that are causing you not to go forward. Because this order of the father uh, was causing the people, because it was there, it was built. This one was built by the people in the community. They had built it so that they will be able to, um, they will be able to, to get, it will be able to attract, because they believed that it was attracting, attracting rain, because it was a god of, god of vegetations and rain. <laughs> You know, there is a, a big tree in our farm. Najua kuna muti katika shabaletu. Big one. Kubwa sana. It is, but, but my father did not give me that land. Baba angu wako nipatia lile shaba. But it was given to other people. Lakini ilipatua kwa mtu mingine. So there is a big, if you come to our place, there is a big tree that occupies almost the whole of this portion. Here. Here. That is where Akinaguka used to go and slaughter. And this is what we were told. Nobody should cut that tree. Even, even today, I say, because it causes our kubwa westshika, nani si omoja from one from one stamp. Ini kubwa, iki ne kubwa. It's like uh, they about five. They going up very tall. And he could now, yes, this one can be a very good investment. You know, you know, you know the, those people who believe in investment, like Benzo, eh? eh? they can get money. And then I was looking at it, and then uh, this one can be a very good one. Eh? I can get money. Where, 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 Get firewood. It's only one Muse who used to go there and get firewood. And because he was an old man. So I'm trying to say there are orders that are raised. <laughs> that is one. Now you go there, and then everybody is hearing. And Gideon was stood by God. This one. This one. This, this altar. I know, I know people worship here. But I want you to go and destroy it. I don't know whether you have an altar yourself. That you believe that this one is my altar. And, and Jeremiah was, was told your business is to destroy 
Uharibu. It is to destroy and to throw down. Na kurusha, ama kuangameza. Even our business today. Hata biasha la leo tu siku ya leo. As brothers and sisters as they come to towards crossing. Kama wadada na wadugu nikienda kutamatisha. Is to destroy. Ni kuharibu. The altars of the devil. Madhabau yote ya ibilisi. Haleluya. You know there are altars that have been raised. So we need to we need to begin to destroy them. Some of them they have delayed us for a long time. We need to we need to destroy them and speak against them. You know it was like an order. Erections in Kenya is like an order. Because after every election, we used we used to fight. There was violence. But, but people decided not again. Not this time. We are going to pray. And people prayed. And we prayed. And we said there is no, there will be no bloodshed. We destroy the altars of the devil in our nation. And we overthrew them. And we destroyed them. And, and we are saying we are not stopping. Even other altars we are going to destroy them. Hallelujah. Amen. There are other orders around our community. Around our communities. God has given us. Church appointed us. Over kingdoms. This time is not the the Babylonian kingdom. We are not talking about the Babylonian kingdom here. We are talking about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the enemy. So we got to destroy the altars of the kingdom of the enemy. Aye. Why? If we are not going to destroy the altars of the kingdom of the enemy around our communities they will continue to be worshipped by our young people they will continue to be worshipped by our men some have turned into, into those altars they have turned into them it's like our God has not been able to solve our problems. But we are saying our God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus himself, and his blood is powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Brethren, we do not need to go back to our old traditions. Yes, I know this one is not acceptable to some people, even those who are listening to me. We do not need to go to those things. We do not need to go back to the things that were done before. Uh, just, just, I want to see. Uh -huh. One. 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 They are the only how many do you have two? Okay, What we are saying? We do not need to travel to Matu and Kiserian and all the other places to go and bring Buzi. Those we, we, because we have built altars. We don't. We, don't. we don't. We have Jesus. So God has appointed you over 
kingdoms. The kingdom of God and the kingdom the, no, the kingdom of God and over the kingdom of the enemy. You have you have the power to overthrow throws and destroy those orders. You got to believe this. Because the moment you believe this, your life will never be the same again. My life will never be the same again. If we believe that we have the power, you will not be shaken. Pastor, hey, well, God. Well. Hi. 26 of, of Judges. When you look at now, let's look at that. To build and to plant. Now, he was appointed to build and to plant. In the, in the nations, he is appointed to build. In the kingdom, he is appointed to to build. In the nations he is appointed to plant. In the kingdom he is appointed to plant. So Jeremiah was told this is what you are supposed to do. You need to build. You need to plant. What are you supposed to do, Jeremiah? You need to build confidence in people about their true God and the way they should worship. What are you supposed to do, Jeremiah? You need to make sure that in the nations and also in the kingdom there is spiritual revival. Because there was spiritual decay. He was to make sure and it costed Jeremiah. It, it costed him. One, he was called, he was called a weeping a weeping, a weeping prophet. He was, he was a suffering and a weeping prophet. And he, you remember what he was told? He was also told, you will not get married. That's too big. Neither will you go to funeral or weddings. You think it was a simple, a simple task? Why? Because he got to do something. He got to make sure. <laughs> Maybe God saw that in marriage, that is where sometimes people go wrong. Because, because he will begin to see good shape, good figure eight. Eh? And, and then he sees one and then he sees another and then he sees another and he sees, he sees five from different different people different tribes some, who, some are worshippers of some are worshippers of idols and then they turn him like the way they did to Solomon remember how many wives Solomon had 300 wives and, and what seven or is it seven or 300 how many wives 300 wives and 700 concubines. So Jeremiah was told, listen. Listen Jeremiah, listen, Jeremiah you will not get married. So that you can keep track on whatever is happening in terms of spirituality in the lives of people. He was told, don't go to festivals. To don't go. You will not go. Or you also think, you, you, you think pastors can go anywhere. They won't. 
you cannot you cannot find yourself in a in a club ukaya pale unasema ati mimi nakunywa soda wapi utachukuliwa saa hii utachukuliwa video na hiyo nyeshwe referred to si mna mna kana alfu bidi deliverance church international should what facebook who you analetwa hapa na analetwa hapa you cannot Maybe some of you can. Eh? But we also take care. Hallelujah. So Jeremiah was told. Never go to those festivals. Never go to a funeral. Never go to, to weddings. I thank God. Now, he was told to build. And to plant. What was he to build? He was to build faith. In the rise of the nations. He was to plant honesty. And faithfulness. Obedience. Love for each other because you know what had happened? They hated Jeremiah completely. Even at, at one time, I remember when you, you get through to read the book of Jeremiah, you find that they were conspiring, they were planning. How are you going to finish this, 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 this prophet? And they wanted to make sure that they have killed him. Call it, call it, you, they wanted to kill Jeremiah. Even to a point when, when people were checking to go to Babylon, and they were told, now it's time to go. And you know what happened? They were looking for strong people. Good people ran it. During the time, the education that was at that time, they were looking for people who are smart. Beautiful people, ladies who are good. The weaklings were left. So they wanted to kill Jeremiah. To appoint the king himself who was at that time, he gave, he talked to the people and he said, no, you don't have to do this. And he asked Jeremiah, where do you, where do you want to stay? You, you, want, you, you want to go to Babylon or you want to stay in Jerusalem? And it was a choice of Jeremiah. He said, I'm going to stay in Jerusalem. So Jeremiah was left in Jerusalem while, while the other people checked. They went to Babylon. So Jeremiah was not among the people that were taken into, into exile. So he had a choice. So I'm trying to I'm trying to help you to begin to do studies. All right? When you go home, when you go home, begin to study. When you get into your office, begin to do your study. So he was to plant honesty and faithfulness. Obedience and love. He was to instill value in he was to plant and instill value in the life of people. Even today. Even today. As a church, we are to build faith in the life of people concerning, concerning, concerning what we believe. We, we, we got to tell our children it is our responsibility. It is your responsibility. You like it, you don't like it. And I like the way our mothers and our fathers were doing. They were telling their children we will go to our church. Even I remember when I was getting married. I belong to the Deliverance Church. So, um, and, and it was like this. The father Baba yake said, Akasema, Mimi siyedi I will not go to another church. Harusi itafanyiwa ACK. Wedding will be done in ACK well, church. Well, you thought it was easy? Zewa, he said, and that was final. Mimi, my clan, my father, and everybody, we needed this greeting to come to our, our side. And then I approached Bishop. 
Nitamuliza Bishop, what are we going to do? And he said, Kwani kuna shida? Silikushikanishwa? Eh? Upewe msichana na kuwe wetu. And that is that. And you know what? Mimi nilishikanishwa na mtu anaitwa Fika. Mm. Alisema hata Fika mwenyewe mimi ndio nitatafuta akachukua simu. Alikuwa na simu those days. Achukua simu kwa nyumba kapiga. Mtu ukateli. Dedo kanyi then you hikwa mu yetu wako. Full stop. That is it. That is it. Mwisho. John, that was the head. Ikwa hivyo. Situkambiwa then ni mkapanga hiyo ingine. Mwisho. Then he had to breathe. Are you going to give our bishop to preach? And then we, we approached the fika and the fika said, no problem, let him come and preach. So the bishop came and preached. What am I saying? We need ourselves to build some values, some things. We need to build things in the life of our children. And we need to stand the ground. Hey! What has been said? What Let's know where they are. Na ukijua una approach kiprani. Unaambia sasa hii sio poa. Unawatembea una So what I'm saying, we need to we need to to believe and what we believe we need also our children to believe what we believe because if whatever we believe has changed us it has the power to change our children are you there? what are you willing to plant? We, we need to build altars. It may not be physical. There is one mzee who normally tells me. When we meet. When we meet, he is so happy. He was an catechist. And uh, when I was baptized. The first time he was the one who was... Uh, at that time he was not a catechist but he was happy when when he see us getting into into religion so he used to tell me one of these days when you come i want you to come and see my altar he has built an altar in his home we, we may not build altars but we need to have waters right from here right from up here we need to know that in this house this house is an altar the whole of it we need to make our houses to be waters all of every place because because kama kama bedroom yako sio altar if your bedroom is not an altar ma demon ma pepo atakuja huko ma pepo demons will come there bwana asiwe sana kitambo upande kwa altar mm -hmm. eh utakuwa umechikiwa hapa kwa stairs so we need to make everywhere where we are living unajua jodia saa hii ananiangalia you we need to make everything and everywhere to be an altar even in this compound ya pastor ufanye kila mahali na kila popote madhabahu hata eneo hili we make everything everywhere to be an, our altar tufanye kila mahali kuwa madhabahu yetu in other word kwa maneno mengi we ourselves sisi wenyewe we are altars sisi ni madhabahu haleluya because in the altar that is where good things are, are, are received from. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So brethren, we need to build altars. We need to, we need to build faith in our children. We need to build faith in our communities. We need to 
begin to say Kenyatta Road is an altar. Ukidrive hivi unasema Kenyatta Road tunaishika kwa Yesu na itakuwa ya Yesu. In other word we are making Kenyatta Road to be for Jesus Christ. Tunafanya barabara Kenyatta ikuwe ya Yesu. Bwana asante sana. Amen. I've repeated the said Nimesema hivi mara mingi that there are altars that we need to destroy. Yakoba kuna madhabahu ya pastor atubomoe. Some of it some of them they have taken charge of us of our town and we need to begin to destroy them and when we destroy them we begin to build altars one of these days with the help of our elders and the and the pastoral team and the senior pastor we, we, we need to have a, a walk and we begin to speak we speak after destroying because we are destroying in prayers we begin to build altars in this I know we have done it when we are learning during those morning morning prayer breakfast. But we need to do it as a church. One, one of the Saturdays or Sunday evening, we, be, we, we those people who are planning for prayers, they plan for a walk. We do a walk in our town. And we say, no more evil orders. No more evil orders. Orders. I know some of them are businesses of, of people. But they are very destructive. Mm. They are painful. Mm -hmm. They are so painful. Because they are destroying our young people. So we, be, we, we need to, to begin to destroy them and those shops, God giving them another idea, they convert them into supermarkets. Or mini supermarket. Are you getting what I'm saying? This was bad during the time of COVID. Wakipeleka nyumbani wanafanyia wapi hapo wakifanyia hapo watoto wako wapi hapo watoto wanajua nini hiyo ni mzuri brethren who are here wapendwa bado tuko hapa let's, let's pray wacheni tuombe let's plant wacha tupande god has appointed us mungu ametuteua god has appointed you mungu amekuteua god has appointed me mungu ameniteua to plant kupanda and to 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 plant those good things. In Jesus' name. So we need to build altars in our city. And all shall be well. So that the spiritual life of our people can be revived. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I want us to begin to look at our lives. As we come to the cross, there are those things that you feel these, these ones, I must deal with them. You must deal with some things because some of them are altars. I was, I was listening to somebody who was this morning and he was calling in, in one of the televisions and he said me I am addicted to some things which I'm not going to mention here. It is like an altar in me. I try to run away from it. I cannot, I cannot be able. And another one was calling and was saying, Can you pray for me? So that, so that I can be able to kill myself. This morning, someone was saying, Bishop, he's a, a friend of mine, and he was in the television, and he was, that the, the girl was praying, and he was saying that I want to die. So, I want the bishop to pray for me so that I can die. Why? 
because of the discouragement. I know there are many things that are discouraging. Hallelujah. You might be discouraged this morning. Hallelujah. You might be discouraged. God has appointed you. You might be disappointed. God has, has appointed you. And he has appointed to do, you to do what? To be over nations. Today, not tomorrow. Today. To do what? To uproot. So there are those things that you feel, these ones, these ones, I need them. You are the one to uproot them. You are the one to destroy them. And you are the same, same person to say, I am now from today planting and building good things in my life. You begin to see things, you begin to see things differently. The way you were seeing them in the morning, you begin to see them differently from now. And you say, I am valuable. I am important. I am, I am what God is saying that I am. And he is able to change your life. You might also not be having any coin in your pocket. And you are saying, Pastor, I do not know. It's, it's, like, it's like things have turned upside down in my life. Begin to see differently now. God has appointed you. Those things that have been planted, those altars, you need to uproot them. Cup. Moja, moja, and destroy them. And God is going to do great things. And you begin to say, I have a job. I have a job. I have a job. My business is going to do. My business is going to prosper. I am going to make profit in the name of Jesus Christ. It is going to happen in your life, in my life, in Jesus' name.